Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, the determined, the stupendous, the exceptionally well-read Dr. Yukon Suck It. Yes, thank you. Yukon Suck It, everyone. Tell your mama. So I am coming to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and I'm bringing to you a deck that I found over at Magic GG on their premium Mythic Standard deck list just released uh, today. Today, and uh, I, I, there's a lot of decks on that list, and this one I, is mono blue. And the reason why I chose it was because it was mono blue. There was no Delver on here. And uh, I really hadn't seen a lot of these cards being played before. And I am not a fan of blue, and I'm not a big fan of specifically this kind of mono, mono blue, which has a lot of counter spells in it. But, you know, big, biggers can't be choosers. I guess I can. And uh, I think this thing has some chance of being interesting. That's what I'm really looking for, is something that will be interesting. And being that's on the premium mythic list, it's got to be competitive, at least for some people. You know, sometimes these things just go completely over my head. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if I can pull this one together. So let's take a look at what's in the deck, and then we'll take it out and see how well it does. At the low end, we've got Fading Hope. This is a card I definitely love. It is a bounce card, which returns target creature to its owner's hand. It can be yours or theirs. You know, but so if you use it against them, that's an offensive Use it on yourself, use it defensively to bounce something back and then instead of letting it being killed. Or maybe you just want to cast it a second time because you really like its enter the battlefield effect, right? Great things you could do with Fading Hope. It is so cheap and potentially you get to scry one depending on the mana value of the creature you bounce. We got Network Disruptor. So this is a flying Moonfolk Rogue. Cuts to 1-1 one, one for 1 and it's flying. So by itself, that is those are some great features for the for the cost but even more so when it enters the battlefield you tap target permanent so the way i see this is that you know you'll have some dudes out you'll try to you'll get ready to go in for the attack somebody's got a blocker so you just pop this guy out before the attack tap whatever that that defender is and you can just march right in and do whatever you want uh even then it, this is flying and i bet you i think we got a bunch of other flies in here so we'll, we'll take a look here is the silver raven i was gonna say sliver but it's a silver raven, one one for one flying. Right? When it enters the battlefield, you scry one. Great. Love it. So we got uh, the ability to tap a target permanent. We have the ability to scry one. And then we got March of Swirling Mist. Now I love this card because it phases stuff out and it's cheap about it too. So you only pay one blue and then X. X is the number of things that you're going to phase out. And when things phase out, they don't come back until their controller's next turn. And so that means that if we wait till your the opponent's turn and we phase out some of their stuff or their guys, then it's gone that turn. It's gone on your turn, and it doesn't come back until their next turn rolls about. So you got two turns essentially of not having that stuff in the in the game anymore. We got uh, make disappear the first of our counter spells only costs you two, and you have the ability to do a casualty, meaning you can sacrifice one of your dudes. Let's see, we cast this, we can sacrifice a creature for the power of one or greater. Yep, that's all it costs you. So any of your guys you can then sacrifice, and then you make a copy of this spell. So that means you, you technically counter two spells or something if you felt like it. Um, in this case, though, for just this counter target spell, unless its controller pays two. So if you copy it, then basically they'd have to they'd have to pay four to be able to like, counter both of them. There's a lot of good things you could do with this particular spell. Uh, I'm not, you know, paying two to, to counter something. I'm not a big fan of that generally. But I think in this case, there's some there's some opportunity there. Uh, here's the Moon Circuit Hacker. So you get a 2-1 two, for two with Ninjutsu for only one. And uh, Ninjutsu is that when something is attacking and it's unblocked, you can pay the Ninjutsu cost to basically replace that attacking creature with this creature instead. And it will be attacking as well. So when this thing uh, does combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. If you do, you discard a card, unless this card just into the battlefield. So basically, you can bring back one of your other dudes if you want to be able to maybe tap another permanent or scry again. So 
you know, that's what you do with ninjutsu is you, you bounce back dudes that uh, can help you in the long run. We got Spectral Adversary. I, you know, this is, and usually this is like the big boy in a blue deck, right? So um, Spectral Adversary is two to go out. He's a two one with flying. Plus he's got flash, meaning you can play him on your opponent's turn. And when he enters the battlefield, you can pump some values of two into him additionally. And for every two extra you pump into him, he gets an additional plus one, plus one counter. And you can phase out that many different target artifacts, creatures, and or enchantments. So there's your phasing again. You play it on their turns. That means you got two turns, yours and your opponent's, where they don't have that thing or those things that are getting in your way. There's the disruption pool. It costs you two. You can counter any target spell. This is great, but but as an additional cost, you have to tap an untapped artifact you control where you're paying three mana to be able to do it. But we got a bunch of artifacts in here. There's an artifact creature there. There's an artifact creature. Uh, let's see if we can find some more. Artifact ninja creature. Looks like that's it. So you got, you got like 12 artifact creatures rolling around. So hopefully that'll work out well for the disruption protocol, right? Then we got Essence Capture. This is an old card. Two mana counter targets creature spell. You put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature you control. Fantastic, right? Uh, here's Covert Technician. And she is three mana for a two four with Ninjutsu. You pay two to get her out with Ninjutsu. And when it deals damage to a player, you may put an artifact card with a mana value less than or equal to the damage from your from, that you just dealt from your hand to the battlefield. So she's able to do two points of damage generally, unless you pump her up. And uh, that means you can pull back any mana value of two or less. It's an artifact. Well, that's uh, let's see if we can find him here again. None of these guys are artifacts. It doesn't start till we get to this guy. But we do have this guy right there, the Network Disruptor, and this the Silver Raven. So these are the guys you can bring back. You can, you can automatically pay. So like you can ninjutsu, like the Raven, back to your hand, attack, put the, the Cobra do the two, and then just put out the Raven without even paying for it, and scry again. So that's a pretty decent little combo there. Not fantastic, but it's a thing. Here's Prosperous Thief, who's a 3-2 for 3, with Ninjutsu for 2. When one or more ninja or rogue creatures deal combat damage to a player, which you got tons of ninjas and rogues, you create a treasure token. I don't know if it's like for each one or if it's just one time. I kind of get the impression it's just one time. Because whenever they say one or more, that's one event, generally. So this is the guy that provides you with treasure tokens uh other than that we've got hall of storm giant which is your big 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 card but you have to have seven mana to be able to play it well that's because it's six and itself essentially we've got 17 islands of the basic variety and we got one bounce land from kamigawa I, that's great i'll probably put more of those in there or something but Anyways, that is the list. I got nothing in the sideboard. I actually stripped it out because we are only talking about best of one here. And that's the deck. So what are we going to do? We're going to put out some little dudes. We're going to ninja them in. We're going to get some effects out of it. And we're going to counter like crazy and bounce stuff back to our hands to potentially phase some things out. Hopefully we can keep uh, board wipes and big dudes from interrupting our plan. And uh, hopefully this thing will win. Let's take it out and see how well it does. All right, we're playing against WH1 slash 1. All right, two mana. Keep it. Ninja, ninja. What does this ninja do? Uh, let's, we'll find out a little bit here. Tapped. Ninjutsu! We'll 
Welcome back. All right, three mana now. Let's just go ahead and give our pal a tap. And go in for it all. Um, an artifact card. Or let's do it. All right. Uh, counter target creature spell. Put out a creature. Put out a creature. Creature! Let's put it on a flying guy. Right there. What does this guy do again? Artifact. Uh, let's just ninja this guy back in. We'll go ahead and pop this guy back to our hand. Uh, no, I'll decline. I'll take that action. And we're in turn. Good. Now we have the ability to tap two things, which means we're going to get in for seven points of damage. Alright, one more to go. I'll take that. Actually, I guess I gotta throw it away. Alright, whatevs. Just tell us, yeah, I've got what? Uh, six dudes. Don't put out three more. You only got three cards, so hopefully that'll work out fine. No lifelink. That's the devil in this situation. I guess I'll only have to fly over. He doesn't have anything with reach. No box. Good game, my friend. On a blue. Victory! Alright, playing against Doom Slug. Oh, two mana again. I mean, that's pretty much all we need. I guess we got three right there. Alright, let's keep it. Maybe we should try to counter some stuff. What do I got? Uh, I got three counter spells here. Wait. Give myself some coverage here. All right. I'm a moon circuit hacker.
This is exactly the kind of deck I hate playing against. As in myself. I hate going up against blue. The sister encounters everything. It's just ridiculous. Uh no. Uh, yeah, I could probably use that, but I really want to counter stuff. Four, five. I'm sorry, man. Just hold on a second. All right, we're good. All attack. Slimming down on our abilities to control things. Uh, draw a card. Yeah, why not? We'll see if they've got something better here. Another dude, huh? Uh, sure. All right. I'm only able to counter creatures at this point. Like that one. Got something else vicious on you there? There you go. Ah. Uh, death! Got me finally. More treasure, more cards. Yeah, Spectral Adversary is the way to go. Five, six, seven. I could pay to get him out, which is seven. So let's just do it. All attack. Suck it, Doom Slug. Suck it. I are playing against Maximus Octavius. Somebody really liked Gladiator, huh? Two mana. This deck does perfectly fine on two mana somehow. Deep. All right, so we've got three counter spells right there. Not so shabby. Okay, so I will need... This is probably what we go for unless he tries to get out a creature. I uh, don't care. You can plow some land, that's fine. Hmm. Let's do it. Really nice. Okay. No, no, don't do that to me, Ninja. Stop, you know, swirling your tassels around. There we go.
Hey, everything else costs two, so I can throw out something that costs two, like that one right there. Oh, I got another counter spell. I didn't even notice. So creature, three mana creature. Okay, there we go. Get on the flyer. Another one, huh? Okay. We get all uppity down there, ninjas. Uh, yeah, let's discard and see what we can pull up here. One of those guys, huh? Uh, we'll just get rid of that one, because... There we go. I know. I'm sorry I was so boring. Victory! All right, playing against Hell Scream. Hell Scream. Like a like Star Scream. All right, two mana. We'll keep it. Transformers. More than meets the eye. Does he have his big old stupid mouth open? Is he hell screaming up there? All right. Looks like he's through with the mulligan. What do we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe just he just pulled into this thing. He's still trying to make a decision. Suck it, blue land. There we go. Touch the precious. Two. And we'll go in for one. I can't do much about that. It's really hoping to be a creature. And it was a creature, but just not the right kind of creature. I have to put up with that wolf. I don't think I could do anything about it. I need some bounces or something. Did I jump in there wrong? I wasn't paying attention. Either I got somebody that's going to attack, or I got somebody who's going to block. Alright, that's fine. Alright, three. We can finally start countering some stuff. And we're doing more damage than he is. There we go. That's a nice guy. Let's put it on uh, Spectral Adversary. All right, four. Go on in, boys. Is this an artifact? Yes. Do I have to be able to tap it? Yeah, I got to do something like that. Uh, let's see. I will just pay for it. Did I pull another one of those tricks on me like that again? Touch the precious. Okay, uh, two. Down to seven. Let's see, if we have to counter for him here. Possibly get out another spectral adversary. Uh, let's see. Yeah, why not? 
And blue is such a horrible color. Okay, we got him down to three. Not just being mean. This is, I just feel really, really bad. Is there sorry on here? Nope. I hope he picks that up and not as a taunting way. Victory! There it is. Alright, so here it is Premium Mythic Mono Blue Aggro. I should say aggro control. It, it For blue, this feels very aggro, but there's just so much control baked in here as well. So, um, <laughs> what can I say about this deck? I mean, it, it it's like a ninja. It's silent, it's deadly, and it's just so precise. Um, I I would hate to play against this deck. I would hate it. I would probably just, after the third time that they countered the only spell I could cast that turn, I'd just give up. This is exactly what I hate. So if you love mono blue, you're, you're loving this deck right now. So let's talk about what was the um, hero of this deck. And uh, I, I, I don't know these creatures are all that, you know, all that great really. I mean, they come out, they're cheap, they attack, uh, they're flying, right? So I got to say, I really liked the flying guys. And who was that? That was uh, Network Disruptor, Silver Raven, and the Spectral Adversary. I mean, the ninjas on the ground, they were kind of rough. Um, because, you know, they were on the ground and they could actually be blocked. So if you had nothing else going on, yeah, they're great. They actually had a decent amount of of, t of power to them, but usually, you know, they had some sort of defender or somebody that would kill them, so you just kind of hold them back. Um, I really enjoyed how we had a bunch of phasing cards in here between the, God, where are we at there? The the March of Swirling Mitts. I mean, there's only one of them. I'm kind of surprised. I really like that card. And um, the Spectral Adversary, where, you know, it comes into play and provided you have enough mana, you'd be able to, to knock out a couple of dudes until it's controller's next turn, until the start of their controller's next turn. Yeah, it's definitely one something you want to play on their turn, so that way they're out that turn and your whole turn before their turn rolls around. Um, so that's a flash thing. Um, I enjoyed Hall of the Storm Giant. I mean, once I got seven mana, which really came because I was getting treasure from one of these ninjas. Trying to see which one it is. There he is, right? The Prosperous Thief. That's the ninja girl that was giving me the treasures that we needed. That was good. The real heroes were the counter spells. I mean, it was seriously, it was um, Disruption Protocol, Essence, Essence Capture, uh, Make Disappear. I mean, there's there's 12 of them. And uh, you make use of them constantly. And you're keeping people from doing stuff. And hopefully with the little dudes you're putting out, you can slam through those 20 you know, life before they get a chance to do anything. So I, I bet you that your biggest enemy is going to be other aggro decks. Anybody that can get out threats before you have the chance to be able to pin them down, that's who you're going to have problems with. Um, you know, like maybe Mono Red Ace or Mono Red Goblin, or even, you know, the, the, the Boros with the cheap dudes that are all like ones and twos, that kind of thing. Control decks are going to get just pounded by this. So let's let's rate this. Okay, so it comes from Premium Mythic. Therefore, it is a competitive deck. And I got to say, on my ratings of it, uh, I lost one time out of 
six matches. So it's got an 83% win rate. Even more so on the draw. So it means I'm me going second. I uh, I took 100% wins. I mean, it's that's incredible. So this is definitely a competitive deck. The question then, is it fun? Now, okay. For me, no. I, I felt really bad about all those counter spells. But for other people, it was probably going to be an incredibly fun deck. So I'm going to give it the fun point just because I know there are some people that love this kind of a deck. And lastly, is there a theme? Uh, well, it's ninja. It's counter spells and ninjas, right? Uh, that is not a ninja. But we got a ninja. We got a ninja. We got a spirit. And we got another ninja. So, yeah. Am I going to call this like a, a counter ninja deck? It's not really a ninja deck. There just happens to be three ninjas in it. So I'm going to say... No, there is no theme to it. So putting all those scores together, I'm going to give this deck a solid A. A solid A. Like if you're in the mood for mono blue, this deck is definitely a great one to pull out. So if you so choose to play this deck, and I bet you you will, I hope you have as much fun as I did and possibly more. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the underground secret headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. In the words of my people, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. <laughs>